Hey everyone, and welcome to the Maria Fontana Show. Today, I have an awesome guest, my dear friend, Laurel Portier. She is an amazing, amazing expert in the marketing and um, how to grow your business world, but I'll let her introduce herself so I don't leave anything out. Hey, Laurel, what's up? How are you? Ooh, I am doing amazing. It is a beautiful day today, and I am always excited to get to teach, you know, such simple strategies for ads because I think, you know, a lot of business owners get very, very scared when it comes to the Facebook advertising platform. But today um, we want to talk about not just Facebook, but multiple ad platforms and making it a little bit easier for you guys, because like what me and Maria are going to talk about today and Maria knows because I showed Maria these strategies years ago. Yep. And, you know, a lot of people are trying to sell you guys the new secret. But Maria, you know this, there is no new secret. It's just yeah. consistency with doing everything that her and I are going to teach you today. Yes, absolutely. So for everyone who's listening, or if you're watching this on YouTube, drop us a like, subscribe, share this video out, or this podcast out to anyone that this could be beneficial for. So we're speaking to all service providers, salon professionals, brick and mortar business owners, or even if you're a service provider who's starting to bring your business online, because that is the truth how I met Laurel. When I brought my business online, my consulting practice, as most of you guys know, I'm a salon owner and I have a consulting practice. She helped me navigate the beginnings that the first like introductions into this crazy online world that was all foreign to me. But the truth of the matter was, and Laura will confirm this, it's tried and true business strategy, which I took from my brick and mortar. And then I followed her simple tips and tools. And I'll let you her share with you um, exactly how we did it. So, so Laura, let's tell everyone like what, what the components are to really showing up online and having a great brand presence And how to attract like ideal clients into your business, period, no matter where you're doing it online. Yep. Actually, um, just to simplify things, we're only doing two things, right? Mm -hmm. One, we're putting out content and retargeting people who are engaging with the content. That's all advertising is putting out content to a cold audience and then retargeting everyone who is engaging with that content. So many people overcomplicate that process. So we're going to talk about like literally two very simple things, Mm -hmm. old traffic and retargeting. And so, and again, we're going to talk about multiple platforms, not just, you know, Facebook, YouTube is huge. And especially like Marie and I were just talking, YouTube is a blue ocean for so many industries, even the online marketing marketing business space. And a lot of people just don't realize like how much of a blue ocean that actually is. And so today I'm super excited. We're going to, you want to, you want to just get right into it, Maria? Let's get right into it. So I'm going to just ask you to explain two things. So I know a lot of our audience now they're, they really have no clue what some of these words mean, right? So I'm just going to explain to them quickly, what's a cold audience and what's a retarget? Because I know there's people listening like, what the hell is she talking about? (laughs) And for those of you who know what she's talking about, cool, but we want to let everyone understand what that means. Yep, absolutely. So cold audiences are people who have never heard of you before, like completely ice cold, right? And then you have your warm audience of people who maybe they've seen a piece of content. Maybe they've seen you on a billboard. You know, maybe they've heard a radio ad, a TV spot. Those are all your warm audiences. And so we always, and, and if there's any type of advertising that you're doing, like if you are like, you know what, I don't want to spend time, you know, trying to figure out who my target audience is on the platform, if anything, creating audiences of people who have already engaged with your content, meaning maybe they visited your Facebook business page. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've, you know, conversed with you on Instagram. Maybe they visited your website. At the very least, you should be having an advertising campaign going to those warm audiences. And today you're going to learn that I actually do that for $2 a day. Yes. And I will tell you guys, I will plug Laurel's practice because I've used it. I recommend it to my clients. And even if you are a high six figure, seven figure business owner, and you're listening to this, you're like, well, I'm not going to be doing that manually. I highly recommend that you get into this program for your team, get this program for your team to up level what they're doing for you. Cause that's what I did. I just handed it over to my team member and I'm like, Hey, check this out follow it. And it really exploded what I was trying, the goal I was looking to reach. So go ahead, Laurel, let's, let's tell them exactly the simple steps on how to get started to attracting the right clients into their business. 
Yep, absolutely. And so I'll just kind of go over now for those of you guys who are, can I, can I get permission to share my screen? And for those of you guys who are listening to this on the podcast, Mm -hmm. Maria can drop the, the YouTube link of this so that you guys can, after you listen to it, you could visually see what that actually looks like. Um, so let's see, is it letting me, where is it not letting me share, let you go in? Okay, there you go. It should, you should be okay. Yep. Okay. There you go. Perfect. So we're going to talk about a couple of things right now, because when most people talk about online advertising, a lot of people talk about conversion ads and sales funnels, right? A lot of you guys who are in the brick and mortar business, or you're just getting started, you know, bringing your business online, you're probably like, oh my God, if you talk about sales funnels, and Facebook pixels and all of that fun stuff that is going to make my head explode. Well, we're going to simplify it very, very much today. So here's where a lot of people get confused. So before we get into the content, I want you guys to understand the entire online ecosystem. I like to call it an ecosystem Mm -hmm. versus a funnel. And all we're talking about is a process from the first time that people um, see you, they hear of you all the way into making that buying decision. And so I like to call that the ecosystem because the ecosystem is made up of all of your warm audiences. It's made up of people, you know, who have engaged by email, people Mm -hmm. who've engaged by visiting your website. It's an ecosystem. They all work together. And what we want to make sure is that if they have any touch points with us, that we're going to follow them everywhere online. We're going to follow them on YouTube. We're going to follow them on Facebook. We're going to follow them on any website that they're visiting. We're going to follow them around so that we stay top of mind. Top of mind marketing is so big, especially for brick and mortar business owners, right? Mm -hmm. You think about, you know, what comes to mind, top of mind is how many of you guys right now If you got into a car accident, you know the phone number of who to call because attorneys are super good at this, right? And they always make their phone numbers super, super clever on those billboards. You know, like right now, like, oh my God, like Morris Bart, like in my area is super huge. Like if I, if I got into an accident, you know, I I know exactly the number to call. That is what we want to create, no Mm -hmm. matter whether we have a brick and mortar business or whether we have an online business. Now, the thing to know about YouTube advertising, Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising is that there are two different types of ways that these systems can actually track. Okay. Mm -hmm. So stay with me here. Okay. This is important. Yeah. This is super important. Yes. Super, super important. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, they will automatically track on platform actions. So if people are watching videos on YouTube, Mm -hmm. on Facebook, on Instagram, the platform is already tracking that. But if you want to track your customers off of the platform, you're going to need to install something that we call the Facebook pixel. Mm -hmm. Google calls it Google site tag. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you want, we'll keep things simple. Facebook and Instagram are owned by the same company. So the Facebook pixel will track actions on Instagram and Facebook. Google owns YouTube. So your Google site tag will track actions off of YouTube and Google so that you can use Google and YouTube to track those people. I'm going to say that one more time, okay? Because people think, well, how do I put a a pixel on my YouTube video? You do not need to do that. You do not need to put any pixels on videos because that is an on-platform action. Now, what I'm about to show you guys is the way that I protected my clients and my students whenever pixels don't work, they don't fire, or most recently, there was something called the iOS update where Mm -hmm. Apple is now allowing people to opt out of tracking, which means the Facebook pixel, the Google site tag, there are cookies that we put on our website that allows Facebook and YouTube and Google and Instagram to track our customers' actions off of the platform. So let's say you 
put a, an ad out and you do a video ad and you you want them to click the link below and it takes them to your website the pixel is what's going to fire on that website to tell facebook okay this person came from this ad and visited your website mm -hmm. that is super important but one of the things that i want to make sure that everyone is protected and can retarget people whether or not that pixel fires or not when the ios happened and people were opting out of targeting uh, off of tracking a lot of people lost that data but not my clients because check out if for those of you guys who are listening to the podcast right now think about your entire sales funnel okay or your website if you're a brick and mortar business mm -hmm. If people are visiting your website, that relies on tracking data that gets sent back to Facebook. What I'm going to show you guys today is going to ensure that whether they visit your website or not, and that pixel gets tracked, you're going to be protected. And that's super, super important because what I teach my students is lots of places to track people that does not include pixel tracking. Now, whenever I show this strategy to a lot of my brick and mortar clients, they just are like, hallelujah, Laurel, because I am not technical. I don't want to mess with the Facebook pixel at all. And so I created a strategy to where it literally utilizes zero pixel data if you need it. And so mm -hmm. today we just kind of want to simplify a very simple strategy that anyone listening or watching right now can easily implement. And it's going to be comprised of three missions. Okay. Mission number one is something that I call power content. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mission number two are offer ads. These are going to be the two types of ads that we are going to run to cold audiences. Okay. Then mission number three are our retargeting ads. Okay. Remember I said that we're going to do two things and two things only. We're going to send content to cold traffic and we're going to send content to warm traffic. So we're going to have these three different types of campaigns. Mission number one and mission number two make up that cold audience. Now, here's the thing. Some of you guys might not do mission number two. Some of you guys might do mission number one and retarget people who are watching your power content videos to mission number three. That might be the only strategy that you do. But I'll give you guys an example. I'm going to give you guys a internet marketing example, and then I'm going to give you guys a brick and mortar example. Okay. So one of my former brick and mortar clients, his name is Carlos. He owned a mattress store in Apache Junction, Arizona. We sent cold traffic to his power content. Okay. So right now you're probably like, what the heck is power content? Okay. <laughs> so power content are high value video ads. I try as hard as I can to get my clients to do them within three to five minutes, because I find that less than three minutes doesn't really give you a good gauge on whether or not someone's really engaging and watching that video. Mm -hmm. So get it as close to three minutes as possible. So I'm going to use Carlos as an example. So power content, think of it as visibility and brand awareness. So little Carlos in Apache Junction, Arizona, had a lot of big box mattress stores as competition. He had mattress firm as a competition. He had the sleep center, all of these big box mattress stores. And so what we wanted to do was we wanted to position Carlos in a way that he is filling the gap in the marketplace. Okay. So I know a lot of salon owners right now are listening. And so one of the most important things that you have to be aware of is what are your competition doing and how can you one, do it better or eliminate something that your customers don't like? I'll give you an example. So I have to go to the doctor to get steroid injections into my arm. 
every time I go to the freaking doctor, I have to sit in the waiting room for a freaking hour, even though my appointment was an hour before. I have to wait. If I got an ad from a doctor that was like, we are guaranteed to see you at the appointment time that you have, you know, scheduled, I would immediately switch doctors and be like, I'm going to this other one because this I'm wasting time. I do not like this. Mm -hmm. So what is another salon doing that their customers completely hate and how can you fill the gap? Can I, can I, inter can I just give my two cents? I'll just give you two Absolutely. examples um, to the salon industry, just because they came off top of mind. It's really the differentiation factor, meaning, you know, like uh, one of my clients has an organic salon. Another niche is they guarantee they get you, you're not going to be there four hours getting your hair done. So that appeals to people. They mm -hmm. offer 10 minute root touch-ups. So they're, they're really, it's about that specialization. It's about offering and giving what everyone else friggin you know hates so really filling that gap so it's super important um even another client of mine who does uh botox she fills her many spa practice because she guarantees no downtime with whatever service she's giving like people aren't all jacked up and they can go right back to work so that <laughs> these are just great examples yep absolutely all of that is power content it's bringing awareness that you even exist and it's getting you maximum visibility. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if we were seeing, um, Carlos's ads on Facebook, he did his power content on one, his brand story. He wanted people to know who he was. He started, he was actually one of the managers at one of the mattress firms and he wanted to spend more time with his family. So many people can relate to that. Mm -hmm. That's what makes him different from so many of these big box mattress stores is you can't really get to know the owner of them. You don't know who you're giving your money to, but yeah. you know that you're giving your money to little old Carlos who wants to spend more time with his girls, right? That's power content. Number one, power content. Number two is him standing in front of his truck. And he's talking about how a lot of mattress stores will make you wait days for delivery. And they give you a delivery window, not Carlos. Carlos, as soon as you buy the mattress, he will shut down his store, follow you home in this truck and deliver your mattress right there on the spot. Filling the gap, right? Mm -hmm. Another one is he's a family owned store. His store is small. He showed people to his little shoe box and he's like, but this is why I can offer lower prices than everyone else filling the gap. So yep. all we're doing is spend, you know, spending $5 a day to get these videos in front of his target audience, which most local businesses, um, I don't even use targeting, honestly, for local businesses, because everyone needs a mattress at some point, right? Right. And everyone so needs their hair do done at some point. I mean, it, this is like a yeah. golden, golden opportunity, especially for the service-based entrepreneurs who, who are still in a brick and mortar space. I mean, it is, it, it works. It really works. Zero targeting. And you could do this for $5 a day in a local spot. Easy. Like mm -hmm. I've got a local restaurant that I do ads for. That's all I do. Local targeting $5 yeah. a day. Nothing, nothing excluding everyone yep. eats. Right. And mm -hmm. so local businesses have it super easy. They don't have to worry about the targeting aspect. Right. But so let's say people are watching our power content videos, right? Mm -hmm. Think about this. And this is a game changer because a lot of times people don't realize how to actually use that boost button that's on your Facebook business page in the correct way. So let's say we create an audience of people who watch those power content videos. Anytime that we're posting on our business page, we just press a little button that says boost and we're boosting it to the people who have engaged with our visibility and awareness ads. Yeah. A lot of my brick and mortar clients, we just literally mission number one and mission number three. We don't even do any like separate offer ads. They do their <laughs> offer ads in their posts. I'll give you an example. So the restaurant that I work with, they post a weekly menu, right? Here's all of the plate lunches that we're going to have this week. All I'm doing is boosting that to the people who have already been watching our power content. They have a band coming up. They do it as a post. I press the boost button and it goes to everyone who is already engaged with those videos. The only thing that are that's going out to the entire area are the power content videos and then we're just simply retargeting people to every single post that they do on their business page 
a lot, one, one of my clients, she is a, um, by day, she is a high school counselor. As her side hustle, she helps parents and students um, through the application process to get into their dream college. What is her ad strategy comprised of? Mission number one and mission number three. That is it. Most of my ads that I run as a business coach com are comprised of mission number one and mission number three, even now. It's super easy and requires zero Facebook pixel. Now, for those of you guys who want to send out special offers, so let's say you do have, you know, a subscription service to getting your hair done, or let's say you have a Memorial Day special, or, you know, summer's coming special on highlights, right? right. That could be where you could send them to a special that is on your website to get them to book an appointment for that special. That would fall into mission number two. If you are an online business coach, let's say you have a lead magnet like an ebook or a webinar, that would fall into mission number two. But we're just staying within these three missions, right? So keep very, it simple. Very simple. Yes, that's the, that's the thing is like, the key. you know, I see so many programs that try to do all of these fancy things. And it's like, if people just understood, put out content, put money on it, right? Because mm -hmm. advertising is just organic content with money on it. That's it. And so that's all, that's all, we're, that's all we do. And I'm just going to put my two cents in here for anyone watching or listening. If you are a brick and mortar business owner, if you're a salon or a medi spa or whatever, you do need a Facebook business page to do all the things Laurel just said. So a lot of people dismiss it. They've been told it's no good, but you're missing the boat because first of all, for SEO, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. The SEO on your Google, on your Facebook business page is always on, you know, in, in the internet world and in your search engines. And you need that to do all these things. Then you can create events in there. You can invite people in and those marry good with your Google business page, which is another topic for another other day. But these are super important. Keep it simple, guys. If, if you're a salon owner, a suite owner, a spa, medi spa, holistic practitioner, healer, that you could really be packing in, especially now that it's spring, we're, we're recording this. It's what is it? It's spring 2022. You really can be utilizing the, the strategies Laurel's teaching. And if you need more in depth in her $7 program, I'll tell you guys, it's worth like $150,000. You go in there, as long as you follow what she teaches you, there is no reason you can't do this if you don't want to hire someone to do it, really. Yep. As a matter of fact, I actually have a brick and mortar example inside the program underneath the, the strategy. Like I've created like strategy docs using some of my, I, as a matter of fact, I think Carlos's strategy doc is actually in there, but think about this, think about mm -hmm. this. And cause I know I hear this all the time. You don't need a business page. You can, you, you know, do your business with a Facebook profile. Yeah. Remember how we were just talking about cold traffic and retargeting, right? Mm -hmm. Think about this. Let's say you are a salon and you're just opening up and you want to have a quote launch party, open party, right? Create the event using your Facebook business page and invite as many people as possible. Yeah. Because what is that? An on platform action. You can go back and retarget all of those people who have RSVP to that event or even just engaged with the page event later. Yeah. Right. And so I try to make sure that my students and my clients utilize as much of the on platform actions as humanly possible so that we can have those retargeting capabilities. Because guys, like so many of you guys right now are sitting on so much money yeah. because you're not running a simple retargeting ad. Yeah. And, and that's why I said that because a lot of clients that start working with me they come in with this crazy notion that they don't need a Facebook business page. They don't oh. need a Google business listing. And I'm like, guys, you're leaving money on the table. You're not existent. Like to me, um, it's a simple strategy that works. I've I over and over again, I know this works. So you really need to you know, follow Laurel sharing with you because it is tried and true. It is simple marketing. Marketing hasn't changed. Laurel comes from the TV world. She's been in the marketing space a long time. The basics has not changed. It's just where we are delivering them that may have tweaked or changed. So this is so powerful. It really is. I mean, you could change your whole business in a few weeks if you just do simple things that she, that she teaches. Simple, because think about this, okay? Like I have this information because I worked in television almost two decades. Do you know how much it is 
for a local business to run a one spot, one 30 second spot in Dr. Phil. It's about $2,000 for one 30 second spot on television. Yeah. On television, you cannot target, you don't like you, you can't target pe- win, women who are ages, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, like hairstyle or, or certain type of beauty magazines yeah. or whatever, like you have to just pick a show. That's the, that's the targeting that you get. Right. Yeah. And so think about this, like, the online space has created such an amazing opportunity for average business owners like you and me Mm -hmm. to leverage advertising in a way that has never been available ever. Like television commercials are super expensive. Now television commercials still work. Billboards still work. Like a lot of my brick and mortar clients, they like want to just go all digital. And I'm like, no, you yeah. need both, right? Yeah. And so, balance. like, whenever you're giving out your flyers or you're you're giving you're doing your mailers, right? Making yeah. sure that the website that you have on there is pixeled, yeah. so that when they pick up your mailer, they go to your website and redeem whatever special that you have. Yep. You're able to retarget them and follow them around because a lot of people who like are are looking around for a salon, they're just like shopping around. They're just like you know seeing who's the best. But it's like if you continue to show up in their newsfeed every single week, yeah, you're going to be the no duh, no brainer right. offer for them to continuously go to. Because how, how often would you say, Maria, that it takes like a couple visits before people become like a regular? I'd say it's, um, it's about three visits before they become a regular. But if you're consistent, again, that's their whole, you know, if, they, if they're consistent, if they show up and if they really um, constantly deliver. It's the it's the excellence and the experience that really keeps people staying. And this is another big thing, guys. If you are a service provider, and you're attracting the wrong people. If you're attracting bargain hunters, tire kickers, people who are not aligned with your brand, then it might be what you're saying online, how you're showing up online. All of these things matter. You know, again, Um, One of my salons is an organic salon. It's very specific who I'm talking to. They shop at Whole Foods. They're cruelty-free. They're vegan. They don't want chemicals. They're no tox. They buy like organic clothing. They've recovered from cancer. Am I making sense? It's very specific. I'm not talking to everyone. So when I put something out there, I have to stop it right away because it gets too, too many people come in. Right. So yes, oh, yeah. it does take a few touch points, but I, again, this is my opinion and, you know, being in this business so long, the more specific they are to what their expertise is, the more that ad's going to convert period. Like it's just, oh, absolutely. You know, like I'll give you, I'll, like, I don't have kids or anything, but I do have dogs. Right. And so like, you know, we take our dogs to a, you know, doggy, they call it like a doggy. So it's called bark Avenue. Uh-huh. Right. And so that's a very important part that like Maria just brought up Mm -hmm. is if we're, we're seeing ads for Bark Avenue, their ads talk specifically about the people that are a good fit for them, right? Because they're higher priced, Mm -hmm. they're higher end. And so you have, if you are a higher in in salon, Mm -hmm. you need to make sure that you are talking and presenting yourself in the way that your ideal clients want you to show up. Right. right. If you are a bargain salon, that's fine. Like show up in the way that your audience expects you to show up. You can't, you know, get on Facebook live or or do your, you know, in like a t-shirt or whatever. And, you know, sitting in your, you know, with laundry piled up in the back and you're trying to attract people to a high end salon. Like if you're trying to attract people to a high end salon, look the part, be in your salon, show people that this is a high end, because I promise you this, if you are polarizing in your marketing, you will not ever have to worry about bargain hunters again. Yeah. It's they will a, just it's stay awesome. away. You're going to repel them. Yeah. Because it's, they're not looking for you. So that is really the basis of all of it. And it really comes to any service-based business. And, you know, a lot of people don't like when I say this, they get annoyed, but it's the damn truth. Um, you have to, <laughs> you have to show up the way you want for what you want to attract. You know, again, if I'm doing, um, a video, you know, if my team's doing a video in the salon and they're showing people something that they want, but they all look like a hot mess. Eh, I don't know if I'm selling you like, you know, keratin treatment to, to help frizzy hair. And, and I look like my hair is like a big fur ball. I will question like your integrity. So people are forgetting that. Yeah, it's cool. You know, everyone wants to be themselves online, but you also have to be mindful. 
project the brand image in your marketing to who you're attracting because otherwise it doesn't work you're, you're inconsistent and people are like eh, i don't know about that right <laughs> yeah no I, it, it completely makes a huge difference whenever you present yourself in a way because um a lot of my people like they're attract like i have a seven dollar a month program you know and so like i'm very like chill i'm not wearing a nice blazer i'm not wearing like i'm very chill like i show up because most of the people who i attract show up just like me right you're and very so not, like, if they're looking for amy porterfield they're not going to you know come to me they're going to go to more like amy porterfield and so that how you show up makes a huge huge difference like sometimes right. people come to me and they're expecting like x y and z i'm like have you even seen my videos? Because that is yeah. not something that I even, <laughs> even portray right. online. Right. So before we, we close, I just want you to share with um, everyone how important, because a lot of people resist me in the business end of it. They resist me on doing video. A lot of people resist me. They're like, I don't want to do video. But in my opinion, now you're the expert in the field. Video has changed my businesses. Brick and mortar. Mm -hmm and online and i just feel like if you can connect with your audience and show up on video you don't have to do anything fancy schmancy yeah just show people what you have to offer give <laughs> them value they, they, then you build that relationship and people just connect with you what, what's your thoughts on that right so people are probably going to hate me even more than they um don't listen <laughs> to me. You for me saying for me saying this no this is if you are trying to build your online business and you're not doing video, you're dead in the water. I'll just say it. Like I'm being real dead in the freaking water because video has become huge. There's a reason that, you know, business owners are using TikTok. There's a reason that people are using YouTube. Like mm -hmm. if you, if your competitors are using video, you don't stand yeah. a chance. And, and in the brick and mortar, business. it's an edge. It is an edge. Like mm -hmm. uh, if you're local and you're putting out cool, they, they don't have to be long. You said three to five minute videos, just like you're, you're doing hair, you're, you know, w walking around your salon, showing the, you know, the shampoos, the products, like sharing the inside behind the scenes. People like behind the scenes shit. They like that. They want to see what you're doing in your business. What the experience is like, what the music is like, what the furniture looks like, you know, a happy client just walking out the door. I think it's a game changer because I see very few people, especially salon owners, especially spa owners. Many, I don't see them doing it. I just don't see it ever, ever in my newsfeed. And that's ever. why no one's walking in the door. Absolutely. I totally you agree with it, you. Your competitors are like, you know, like, you know, Maria is absolutely right. And this is something I tell people when they come into my program, if you're not willing to do video, then forget about it. Like forget yeah. about online advertising because yeah. yeah, you might get one or two people in, but your competitors will get 10 times the amount of people that you will. Yeah. I mean, I even have my clients put their videos, repurpose their videos. Now repurposing means guys, you make the video once, then you can put it on all different platforms. I make them repurpose it on their Google business page, which is a free business listing, but you can use that and it gets out there. So again, as a closing statement, I mean, Laurel has this amazing offer, guys. She has this, this amazing program. I highly recommend it for you yourself or to have your team into it. It's $7 a month. It's really worth like $750 a month, maybe even more, <laughs> maybe 7,000 a month. I've been in there. I know Laurel a long time. She has helped me. We have helped each other. I helped her grow her business. She helped me grow mine. It is a game changer. So I want you guys to check out either the link above, below, wherever you're listening or, or watching us. And Laurel, I want to thank you so much. Did I leave anything out where they can get you? Maybe just give them your website, you know. Yeah, just, um, yeah, it's verbally. ad coaching. It's easy, ad coaching for seven.com. And even though it's $7 a month, I offer weekly Q and A and two zoom coaching calls. So if you're like thinking, oh, I'm just going to get the how to videos. No, like if you utilize the resources in the $7 program, you will not have to spend an extra dime on anyone else showing you how to do ads at all. Yeah. It's a game changer. I highly recommend it. So Laurel, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I am super, super honored that you were here. You're awesome. And I can't wait to connect with you again. And, uh, up level my marketing too. Awesome. Thanks, Thank babe. you for having me.